Okay, everybody, I'm going to make a new video this morning, as you can see. And I realized that there's a lot of people coming to my YouTube channel that do not belong to the Spin and Throw Facebook group. So they have no idea what I'm talking about. And that's just fine. Um, there's a lot of people that have joined the Facebook group Spin and Throw Disc Golf that have no idea what I'm talking about. They have no idea of why Spin and Throw is my own unique uh, approach to teaching the backhand in disc golf. And I have gone off and kind of done my own thing. I'm going to give everybody a little history of myself, um, whether you want to know it or not, I guess. So 2002, I was, uh, throughout my life, I've been a pretty good ball golfer. Pretty good. I've had, in 2002, I shot three under par from the tips at Cheryl Park Golf Course in Richardson, Texas, which is the U.S. Open Qualifier Course. And that was pretty salty. So I was very excited about that. And I had worked really hard for about three or four months and had my game together. It was putting really well. And um, my friend said, hey, let's go play disc golf. I hadn't played disc golf in years. I played disc golf in, since I was 12, actually, on and off. I started in uh, elementary school and, um, you know, obviously wasn't serious about it or anything. But D Tulsa was a very disc golf oriented city. And we had courses almost, we were some of the first courses in the whole country. We had Riverside and McClure Park way back in the middle 70s. And um, I played in college, I played tournaments, won some tournaments. That was back when an AVR was a driver. Um, so 2002, I shoot this great round of golf. Somebody says, hey, let's go play Frisbee frisbee golf and I went to the frisbee golf course and I separated my right bicep in two 100% separation my entire bicep was up in my shoulder and that was from my arm un uncocking I had a cramp at the time of my arm uncocking and I separated my bicep in two I don't suggest that anybody have that happen to them because it was not good and I had surgery thereafter and uh, repaired my arm and put my bicep back together and then I spent 2003 rehabbing doing physical therapy and I got in really good shape and I started playing disc golf left-handed because I realized it was the same as my golf swing left-handed and eventually I my arm was strong enough I went back to throwing right-handed and then about that time, I discovered Blake Tuckinen's teachings, which Blake was just so far ahead of everyone else. I give so much credit to Blake. There's so many things that Blake did that he was so close to so many things and did so much great video at the time and took so many pictures. And, and Blake and I became friends. And Blake came and visited me when I lived in Texas and we we spent you know many days going and playing and talking and and um, he gave putting clinics and stuff like that we did that a couple of times came down from Minneapolis and after that um, Blake and I kind of hit on a lot of the same things at the same time and that's when I made that was like 2008 2009 that's when I made my um, uh, disc pivot video the truth about the snap or whatever it's called and Blake and I were talking about that because Blake was that was his main thing was snap it was like how do we get snap and I spent all of my time focusing on the snap and I didn't know anything about how the body worked I never claimed that I was a a guru on how to achieve body positions or anything years ago, you know, a decade ago, more than a decade ago, it wasn't. It was just mostly focusing on on creating a powerful snap and disc pivot and uh, did pretty well doing that. 
and played in a lot of tournaments. I also, over the years, um, because I was a puller, you know, I started out with the Scott Stokely videos that you turned around and pulled. Well, I already had a bad back from playing golf, and I just destroyed my back. I just, my back is wrecked. Um, it's full of arthritis. I'm losing the feeling in my feet. Um, you know, I'm 53, and um, I've got narrowing in my spine, and my right hip is a wreck. Uh, I already had kyphosis and scoliosis in my spine. So, um, a few years ago, so it's about three, it's been about three, three and a half years ago, uh, remembering that my upper arm is put together with screws, I was practicing getting into the quote-unquote power pocket, which is where you move the disc across your chest and stick your elbow out. And when I did it, I ripped my bicep at the top up by my pec pretty bad. And I thought, okay, that's, that's a problem. And it was really bad because I thought if I detach my bicep at the top, I'm done. You know, I'm a cripple for the rest of my life. And at that time was another thing. Um, the videos started coming out. So you had Joe Mez and Central Coast Disc Golf and you had these HD slow motion videos. And I started watching the videos and I realized that the pros aren't doing any of the things that has been taught for years. That none of the really, and this gets me into a lot of trouble, but the video did not show a pull across the chest down the line and a hard push off the back foot in a straight line, yada, yada. It didn't show any of those things. It showed what I later termed as spin and throw. And it is based on Spin and throw is based on um, the teachings of Jimmy Ballard in golf, which was the the, the uh, arms are always between, working from the chest, from the center of the chest. This is not controversial. Jimmy Ballard wrote his book in the 80s. Okay. And you realize that all athletic motions are very similar to this. They keep your arms working straight out of your chest. The ball golf club is working right in front of your chest the whole time. It never gets across your chest one way or the other. And then um, also the teachings of Mike Austin that got me out of the flat-footed David Ledbetter twisty, I call them twisty pullers, where you stand flat-footed and pull the handle down in ball golf. And that's what ruined Tiger's back, by the way. He had the most beautiful golf swing. And actually, I have thought about adding to my channel ball golf um, also. And the only reason I don't is because I already taken up abuse from disc golfers and ball golfers would lay into me like you wouldn't believe. But basically Mike Austin was the same way. He taught exactly the opposite of what later became the in vogue thing in the 1990s and the 2000s, this idea of ground forces and we're gonna stand flat footed and twist our body and pull the handle down into the ball and all this crazy stuff, and Jack Nicholas never did any of that. Jack Nicholas used to laugh at people. I, I've watched the videos where he's like, I have no idea what these people are talking about. I throw that club head as hard as I can at the ball. But Jack Nicholas had the greatest golf swing of all time, but nobody teaches it, interestingly enough. So basically, um, a lot of the same principles ended up in, in disc golf. I teach the same thing in ball golf. I might have to do a video just so you can see the comparison of how I teach um, basically standing up on your legs and throwing the club head as hard as you can from the top away from the ball. But I won't go into that. Um, but long story short, which is not, but uh, I'm doing all this one take, so you just have to live with it for a second. Basically, I went out in the world and I said, hey, I've got this this new approach 
and I'm calling I'm going to call it spin and throw and it I think it's actually what the pros actually do and it's it's a spin with the disc working straight in and out of the chest and all of the throw is basically a setup for a very fast rotary motion the same as every other sport and that's how they actually throw and I went out in the world and I was on the forums and I was on yada yada and all I got I mean people were ripping into me because I was challenging the notion of a push off the back foot I think pushing off the back foot is counterproductive to a fast rotation um, and I was absolutely um, against the disc working across your chest into the quote-unquote power pocket that's somewhere at the right peck and I actually was speaking against it saying that that's counterproductive to power and the good players absolutely don't do it and um, it became a thing and I said okay I'm just gonna leave the internet to everyone else I left all of the forums I'd had as much of people telling me I didn't know what I was talking about or whatever. I just said, okay, well, I'm going to go start my own group on Facebook and make it a private group. And I'm going to teach what, what I want to teach. And if people want to learn what I want to teach them, then they can come to the group and learn it. And, and all the other guys can have the entire internet. And that's what I did. And uh, interestingly enough, here's a video that was made by Jeremy, who's in the group, and he does these amazing videos for me, and I'm gonna to try to start incorporating them. But this is Paige Pierce teaching what she does and then showing what she does in the split screen. I'm thinking about my right foot, my right hip, and my right elbow, all going forward at that. Okay, so people who know about spin and throw will see that all the elements that I teach are essentially in what she actually does. I have, I have so much love for Paige. She's amazing. Um, she feels a certain thing. She teaches a certain thing. But in actuality, if you look at the video, it's not what she thinks she's doing. And that's not unusual. I don't know why that's so uncontroversial. Why, why is it so controversial that a pro feels one thing and does another thing? I mean, so what? You know, people who coach and people who play are two different things. Only in disc golf are people infatuated with the pros teaching. In no other sport is that the case. But you can just see, I mean, you can see all the elements of spin and throw, which I'm gonna go through and we'll go back to this video. So I'll pause that. So I have this at the top of the group. What, what is spin and throw? And all there's videos that correspond to every one of these elements that are in the top. They're in the playlist on YouTube and they're in the they're pinned in the top thread. So the disc only works straight in and out of the chest. The upper arm is fixed at 90 degrees out of the chest. The chest is wide open at release. This is the truth about the arm video. It's the first video I made and it shows clearly the positions that the pros actually attain. They never ever stick their arm out to the right. That simply is not true. And I call that flapping. I call that a negative. That's a bad thing. That means your chest's not moving. And the way you achieve the power pocket is by rotating your chest and your elbow gets way out in front of your head, which is the position that we all see in the good video. So that would be this video. Let's see right okay her elbow did not go across her elbow is still pointed straight out of her chest let's go back that is straight out of her chest straight out of her chest she's maintaining that that 90 degrees now whether or not there's a little bit of bend that's really beside the point the upper arm is following the chest okay and power pocket 
And the disc is not over here off her right pec. It is on her left pec, which is element number two. The tuck is on the left side of the chest. The lower arm and wrist curl into the tuck, which is she's put her hand on the other side of the disc. It's curled around the disc. This is why I teach swinging or curling around into the tuck, not stick your arm out and then pull it into your chest. Um, there's absolutely zero working of the tuck sideways across the chest. The forward elbow is simply the opening of the chest. The forward elbow that people see is simply the opening of the chest and the tuck, which is this. Yep. Elbows way out in front, arm, here's that angle, here's the, the curl around the disc to get her hand on the far side of the disc and get it curled all the way around. Eagle curls his hand all the way around to heat, all the way around like to what would be nine o'clock, past nine, like eight o'clock. It's insane. And the idea that you don't curl your wrist is like, that's crazy. Everybody curls their wrist. There you go. She didn't work her elbow across her chest. She moved her chest right between her feet. Mm -hmm. All right, keep moving. Okay, here's where I went on a completely different direction. I said, the left side, the trailing side is the engine of the throw. There, the right side does hardly nothing. The, the, the right side is the pivot point and the left side comes around the right side. The left side compression is what I call it. So you see this where she's driven her left side into her right side and made a very small rotation. It doesn't look like this. It looks like this. That's compression. She's actually slamming her left side forward in rotation, not a push, not a push, it's not a push. It's a rotation of the left side using this knee and this hip and she falls onto this front foot and bam there it goes it's rotating that is not pushing it's not doing this look at her foot look at her knee it is rotating so this is one of the major controversies of my teaching is that the left side is the power side not the right side but this is exactly what we teach in ball golf the trailing side is where all the power is. Uh, same thing in batting. It's the same thing. It is throwing the back side of the body around the front side of the body. Same thing a pitcher might do. He's throwing his, he's planting on one leg and throwing all his weight over the other leg. The, I don't teach a pull. In fact, I teach against the pull. I've done a video called Pulling Destroys, Destroys Pro Form. I stand by that to this day. I can clearly see that in students I work with, that when they're working on pulling, they're all out of position. The disc is ejected forward from the chest in a throw out. And this is the point where the wrist becomes loaded up. As it goes outward, it's, it has, it, since it's going outward, it will actually get curled in even more. See, she's curled in even more and now it goes out. Her head is, is snapping back. You can't really see it. There it is. There, watch the top of her cap of her. And boom, it actually goes backwards slightly. Now on this one, she goes forward. Okay, so it goes backwards and then swings around forward. I call it the reverse P. Now it'll swing around over here. The disc is long gone. That's, I don't want to go off on a tangent. Okay. Uh, I teach that the disc is thrown out parallel left. I don't have a video for this. There's several of them. I'm going to make another video. You can clearly see, I just made a video with Calvin Heinberg and uh, Paige, and they both eject the disc forward in an arc away from their chest. It's not pulled across their chest. Not at all. Nobody, almost nobody does that. Not to say there aren't people that do it but they're not people that you want to um, copy. The line of the disc is actually 
uh, made up of the fact that the disc is going forward and the rotation creates a rearward motion and the two work against one another and I explain this as if you were taking a gym towel and you were wanting to pop a fly on the wall with it the best way to pop the fly is to lob the the front of the towel at it and retract the handle so all powerful snapping motions have a forward element and a backward element so actually spin and throw by trusting your spin and this is kind of what Dave Dunapace was talking about for years I mean we're things have been all around it I think I'm just the person that brought it all together that's what I think I give myself that credit I've actually got a method it's not a bunch of tips it's not like golf digest back in the day where every month it was get rid of your slice here's a new thing do this do that it is this is the method this is the method we the other thing I teach is slowing down is never a way to throw more accurately. You can actually throw more accurately by accelerating more. Never slow down to correct the line. If the disc is going to the right, throw out left sooner. If the disc is going to the left, spin faster. So these things, that's spin and throw. That is the root of the element. The disc is, it's, I teach exactly the same thing that you see in ball golf, which is there are two lines. There's the line of the player and the line of the disc, and the two things are parallel train tracks that go to the target. And that's it. That's I don't know why that's so unbelievably controversial. Okay, I'm not saying that people haven't ever hit on these elements, little bits and pieces of them, but nobody's ever actually taken that and then taken video evidence and put video evidence with the method. It's a method. Spin and throw is a method. A cohesive strategy of elements that allows the average player to throw the disc in the same manner as the best modern professionals. It is not a bunch of tips. Okay. And I think at this point, the group and my students and my Patreon, bless their hearts for supporting me, have proven that this works. I have students that went from looking like total beginners to looking like touring professionals. That is not an exaggeration. And all it was, was we are trying to copy the video that we have in the same manner of, here's, this is one of my students sent me this. I didn't make this. He's like, here, I'm going to show you this is the thing that everybody keeps talking about. This is what she says she does over here, and here's what she actually does. Here it says, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, look at my knee. I'm pushing, I'm pushing, but it's not, it's rotating. It's a rotation from the trailing side. Look at the leverage. Look at the leverage of the knee, dropping and spinning, the hip. Wham! That's where the speed comes from. It's not a push. And I've done video after video trying to explain it. And I know it's controversial because it disagrees with everything that's being taught out there out in the world. But you know what? And this last thing I'm going to say, I gave the whole internet to everyone else. I have my YouTube channel. I have my spin and throw group. And now I have my Patreon, which you have to pay to belong to. And yet, I, it's like that's still not enough. That I gave them the whole internet. They can go talk about whatever they want to talk about. I'm going to teach spin and throw. But that's still not enough. They still come and find me and tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. And it's like, dude, have you watched the video? Here's, why don't we just, I was like making a joke today on the group. I said, I should change the name of the group from spin and throw to, hey, let's look at the video. And if you can't see these obvious differences, as pointed out in this little gift, for example, between the teaching and the actually what's happening, I don't know what to do about that. You know, some people just ain't going to get it, I guess. I think I'm going to call it quits there. I uh, hope that this was useful, gave you some information about myself. And thank you, Blake Tuckinen. I, you know, I miss Blake. Um, I speak to him occasionally. Works at Gotta Go, Gotta Throw. Um, 
I'm going to do a video on the one finger throw, which is something that Blake is a big believer in. And I am too. I'm throwing the back of the disc. These are all disc related things. We spend a lot of time talking about the body, but I really think there's way more that can be gained in a lot of ways from actually talking about how that disc comes out of your hand. That's a big one too. And um, there were a lot of people that came before me and I'm sure there's guys out there who have taught good elements, <clears throat> probably touched on things that I, that I came up with and put together myself. I'm not saying that never happened. I'm just saying that I took that and I, I, I don't think anybody ever taught that the left side is the power, ever. Nobody taught that. But I'm starting to hear that in coverage. When you hear the guys talking about people's throws, they're talking about the left side and how the left side works. Nobody was talking about that. And now they're starting to. And take it however you want to take it. Eventually, everyone is going to teach these elements because these elements are actually what's happening. So everyone will be teaching this. That's my take on it. And because the, there's too much video showing the opposite of what was taught for years where we didn't have video. I'll give you an example, and then I'm going to have to cut this off, but I actually have a video of Scott Stokely throwing in his prime in the 90s. And I did um, look at that and realized that he throws exactly, he looked like Eagle. He throws with the same, had a very Paige Pierce looking throw. And he teaches this whole other thing. And that's fine. He can teach whatever he wants to teach. I'm just saying like, there was no video back then. There's video now. We can just look at the video. We don't have to go and listen to anybody in particular. Just go to the video, break it down, look at it. And that's why I've been doing more and more video breakdowns because I'm hoping that the evidence, like I was, one of the things that I teach that you can see right here is that people say, oh, you don't fire your lower body till this foot hits the ground. Okay, here's the hip, here's the hip, going back, going back, going back, is the foot hit the ground, and wait, here it comes, there it is, knees going forward right there, and more, oh, oh, there it is, oh, it's firing, her foot has barely touched the ground. And her knee is long gone by the time her knee has traveled 12 inches. So that, that teaching is incorrect. If you're copying Paige Pierce, who I think is the one to copy. I'm going to leave that there. One more frame. There we go. It's not a push. It's a rotation. All right. Join my Patreon. I think you'll like it. Uh, thank you to all my students that have been so wonderful to me. You are truly a blessing. Um, I've had a lot of fun. And I hope that you take away from this video the positives in which it's meant and not pick apart the other people that are not my students. Please don't pick apart what I'm saying and make it into a negative. This is just the history of it. And this is the basis of it. And if you don't agree with it, then there's the whole rest of the world. You can go hang with those guys and that's fine but if you like what i'm saying and you agree with what you're seeing with your own two eyes yeah then join spin and throw um subscribe to my uh, youtube channel uh, city smasher 2 and join my patreon that'd be which is spin and throw patreon.com spin and throw this is brad talk to you later bye